Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Satish Chantapandi. Uh, I work as a head data scientist uh, at Orbital Global Group. So today, um, I'm going to speak about um, artificial intelligence and its application. So in this, in the century, we have seen lots of technologies come and go, but artificial intelligence has been one of the most destructive of all. It's already been used by a variety of businesses across the globe uh, in many different ways. Uh, it could be from just optimizing uh, customer engagement to optimizing uh, car manufacturing uh, to nuclear reactors, uh, and, and it's already affecting our everyday lives. So today, uh, in, in my presentation, uh, I'm going to speak about the, what is an AI, uh, demystify some of the jargons that are, that are prevailing uh, in, this, in this sector and this field, and how AI can help business, and what are the applications of AI. Uh, so then I'll we'll speak about how to frame an AI problem, and what is needed to frame an AI problem. What are the key challenges in AI, and how do we overcome that? Uh, and then I'll end up with uh, some of the future trends of AI. Well, uh, so what's AI? So AI is nothing but just intelligence demonstrated by missions. So we all have intelligence. Similarly, another uh, mission demonstrates such an intelligence or have, have such intelligence. It's just called artificial intelligence. So nothing, nothing more than that. Well, then what is machine learning? So basically, machine learning, or think of that as a algorithms that actually give the ability the computer to learn or to possess the intelligence. Uh, there's this there's big difference between traditional um, programming and machine learning, a way of programming and helping computer to understand or demonstrate intelligence. Give you an example. Uh, if you just take uh, a, a dead end road and a car is traveling um, uh, towards it, so in a traditional program uh, programming methodology, what we what we would say is, whenever you see a dead end road, you have to turn back. So that's how you program it. In terms of machine learning, you do that in a very different way. You don't explicitly teach that whenever you see a dead end road, you have to turn back, but you actually feed them with data with lots of cars hitting the dead end road and turning back. So you can see the difference how the machine learning and traditional programming are different. So here, computer is watching or uh, it's just completely seeing what is happening whenever a car sees a dead end road and it's turning back, so it learns automatically, uh, or without explicit programming, it'll, it'll just it'll understand that whenever I see a dead end road, I have to turn back. That's the difference between uh, the traditional programming and a machine learning, and it has lots of benefits. Well, uh, the final one is the deep learning, and lots of people speak about deep learning. So deep learning is nothing but it's machine learning, a subset of machine learning, uh, set of algorithms, uh, that mimic the function of the brain, and uh, our 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 brain works uh, something like has lots of neurons, and whenever something happens, it fires, and some of the action takes place. So these algorithms, set of algorithms in deep learning, mimic that, and they are called neural networks. And there are a variety of algorithms, like so many of them. Well, right. So we know what's AI, ML, and deep learning, or at least. Uh, some of it, right? Let's uh, speak about you know how can it actually help startups and small businesses. I'm going to give some applications uh, that uh, Orbital Global Group has uh, deployed or we are currently working towards. Uh, the first one is automate customer engagement. So we developed an avatar assistant uh, which can help interact with customers in variety of areas. Uh, although predominantly we worked on uh, healthcare sector, uh, I'll just show you what we have created. You can see it's going to play this here. Uh, on the left, you can see the traditional Dr. Matt Pickover, asking questions. Here to answer your questions about coughs, colds, and flu. 
on the left, you can see this, uh, this traditional way of asking questions and getting a reply. But on the right, we have created an avatar uh, which, can, which users can actually have real-time interaction. And why is this needed? You can take this as an example. You can see here, uh, the application here is to actually empower patients or inform patients even before they go and see a GP. Uh, to take an example of here, it's cold, cough, and flu, which are minor ailments, and uh, lots, lots can be, lot can be done by self-help, even without going to the GP. So, using this technology, people can uh, empower themselves, um, and maybe you know, uh, don't need to see the GP at all. And even though they wanted to see a GP, they they can have much more um, uh, informed conversations, and it will try and reduce lots of time for GP. Uh, so that the GP can uh, use their uh, time for uh, the most complex cases. So we know it can help answer questions, it can signpost various things. Um, as I told you, it can alleviate pressures and allow, allows you to focus on tasks that matters most, lowest cost, because it works 24 seven. So some of, some of the things can happen at night, for example, infant colic. Uh, so this, this has been very, very helpful. Now, this one is, uh, it's its not what people have uh, seen uh, or, you know, they don't see our assistants can help and do this, but they can collect unbiased use of data. And this is the key thing. Uh, lots of lots of companies spend lots of money to understand uh, how their product fit to the market and what are the customer needs or what are the customer thoughts. This assistance can actually help them uh, get that information in a very unbiased way because all, all the users are doing is they're actually typing in questions. And this can be stored somewhere anonymously. And you can run in data analytics on it to understand what is being frequently asked, you know, what are the thoughts, or what are the what are the user thoughts on some of the products and uh, how do how how we can change that. So this this is this is very, very useful information. Going on to the next one, uh, we developed um, um, a dashboard. Uh, uh, with lots of analytics and machine learning algorithms that can actually help and uh, plan a COVID vaccine campaign um, for government of Rwanda. So you can see this is one of the dashboards of several dashboards we created. Uh, this is what 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 it is showing is you know the things on the red on the left hand side showing the areas which requires attention or which requires most most attention. And also, it also gives you an indication as to you know what is the population, the total population of all those regions, what are the campaign costs, how much does uh, does it cost for a person, and how many persons are required. So you can you can actually with with all this information, you can just plan the campaign in a very effective way. And also, you can see on the right you see some analytics. So based on the historic data we have seen, if you run a campaign for five days, you can see on the first day lots of people turn up. And usually it just decreases. So with this information, you can actually uh, place a uh, workplace, uh, workforce in such a way that you know uh, the demand is met. And there are other things. So we created many, many dashboards so which, uh, which can be personalized for whoever is viewing it. If a director is viewing it, they just want to know uh, the overall, overall, overall figures. Uh, but if someone like a program manager or a, a campaign manager, um, is viewing it. They want to see a little bit more detail uh, in, in detail level of you know um, things. So we have created all those things, and it's been very very helpful for them. So uh, with this tool, we could uh, cut down the campaign um, planning task from four months to a month. Uh, the other example is IoT device. So the world is now becoming all IoT uh, covered. <laughs> so we have sensors for from for. For the fridge, we have sensors on uh, washing machine, dishwashers, na you name it. Uh, so IoT devices are helping or reshaping the world in a very different way. Uh, so how can we use IoT device for farming? Uh, climate change is a very big thing, uh, and you know we can use IoT device to optimize um, uh, or improve crop yield by understanding the soil nutrient nu nutrients and try and uh, provide. Uh, fertilizers that can actually match the demand of the soil. So in, in that way that you're actually minimizing the use of fertilizer and so that you know it doesn't run off in the environment and pollute 
uh, the rivers and on soil. Right, those those are three examples uh, I have. Um, now there are there are plenty of examples that uh, <clears throat> that AI yeah, can be used, uh, uh, and from you know we know about self driving cars, uh, we know about um, I mean self controlling thermostats. Uh, there are there are many many applications of AI. Um, uh, it's a, it's endless. Now uh, let's go on go on to you know what is really needed for AI and how do we frame an AI problem. So like any other problem, we just have to identify uh, an opportunity or a business case. Uh, we have to define a problem uh, with the help of you know um, uh, other similar examples that use machine learning. So if there's an, an example that can help a lot. Uh, next thing to think about is, is the data set, which is, which is how an AI uh, problem differs from, from a traditional, uh, traditional point of view. So is, is there a data set already available? Available, that's very good. Um, we have to think about how good the data set is because as I mentioned, um, computer is going to learn from the data and if the data is all bad, it's going to learn really bad. So garbage in, garbage out. So the next thing is the data is not there. So determine where it's going to come from. Uh, orbital media, we have created lots of data um, synthetic data generation techniques uh, for text uh, and for images as well. Uh, so we could we could leverage, uh, when there's no data, we could find data, we could create data and start the learning process. And then, you know, AI can uh, pick up from there once deployed live. Uh, so whenever we, we have a data set, it's very, very important to think in terms of bias. So what kind of bias would the data have? Uh, so it's good quality data, uh, whether it's data bias, so if you're collecting data, so we have to think about the privacy and security, uh, make sure it's all anonymized, um, doesn't fall under GDPR constraints. If it falls, you know, what, what steps you have to take to actually uh, keep it anonymized and also secure. Mm, whether it is ethical, that's very, very important. Remember, uh, the other thing is, uh, you can have a data, you can have a problem, but actually taking that into production, into life, uh, or making that as a product is a very, very challenging task. Data science or machine learning algorithms uh, to be taken to life involves lots and lots of process. So it involves uh, computing science, it involves mathematics and statistics, it involves the machine learning algorithms itself, it involves a traditional software methodology, you have to know, understand uh, the problem. So all of this has to come together and that's when you can actually go and deploy a good product live. Well, uh, so what are the challenges in AI? So we know how to frame a problem. Uh, at least we know a brief of how to frame a problem. Now, the key challenges in AI are obtaining a quality data. As I mentioned, garbage in, garbage out. So it's very, very important. Uh, to get the quality data, and even though you can get the, you can get the data, uh, it's always the case that not all the data is useful. So you have to remove some of it. Uh, there's also a question of you know how much data is required, and um, it is we have to determine that case by case, and there's no uh, one 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 solution for it or one answer for it or one number for it. Uh, so the more the merrier is you know how. Uh, how, how the mission feels. So there's a high developmental cost. So you have to get the data uh, and then label the data, you have to annotate, um, and then you have, to, you have to train the data. And usually this can be very high developmental cost. Uh, machine learning algorithms or, or computers can, will do any task that's been assigned to do. We have to carefully consider the ethical replication of the tasks. That's, that's a key thing. There's a there's, there's a big talent deficit in this in this field because as I mentioned earlier, uh, if you want to take something into production, uh, you need a combination of factors from mathematics and statistics to traditional software engineering and then machine learning and, and, and have a subject matter expert. And they have to you have to come bring bring all of all of these things together. And usually in this field, uh, Brilliant data scientists uh, lack uh, 
the common um, software uh, engineering methodologies. So that's that's a key challenge in AI, uh, right? Uh, so to conclude, um, AI is you know has a huge huge market, um, and it's gonna one of the, the recent Forbes studies shows that the big business leaders have said that it's gonna have uh, the greatest impact in the coming years. So and it's it, it share it occupies a market share of sixty two billion in two thousand twenty two, and it's expected to grow at forty two two point two percent um until 2027 it's very very important to understand uh, or keep this in mind that ai is just a tool like any other tool um uh, in your toolbox uh, to make life easier it's not going to solve it's not a magic bullet to solve everything uh it is important to understand where and how best to use it so AI is here to stay, and it's already affecting our lives, and it will continue to do so. It's important to understand the bias for privacy and the ethical uh, consideration uh, when actually deploying a product. So that's all from me. Uh, if you have any further questions, uh, please contact me uh, on my email. Uh, thank you very much for listening. Thank you.